Well, good evening. Welcome to the 6 p.m. press conference here on the CZU Lightning Complex. My name is Jonathan Cox, Deputy Chief with CAL FIRE San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit and the line officer here on the incident. As always, if you could just mute your cell phones and take any conversations away from the press conference area, as well as keep your mask on at all times, it would be greatly appreciated. We will have uh, time at the end, as usual, for questions and answers with all of the representatives up here. With that, just the 6 p.m. incident information on the complex itself. The fire is now 85,060 acres, 85060. Uh, containment has gone up to 41%. The fire is now 41% contained. There are still 6,759 structures that are threatened. And the destroyed structure count is now up to 1,453. Of those 1,453, 52 are in San Mateo County, eight of which are single-family residents. Uh, there's 1,400, uh, 1,401 structures destroyed in Santa Cruz County. 901 of those are single-family dwellings. We uh, continue to increase the personnel assigned to the fire. We now have uh, 2,394 firefighting personnel on the line. And as we've discussed over the last few days, the incident is really transitioning from a uh, mitigation to a recovery phase as we continue to improve the lines. Uh, with that, just understanding and recognizing that resources are very much um, uh, being directed to each of the individual counties now. Instead of the incident, it's uh, each individual county. And we'll get more information on that this evening. With that, just a quick uh, operations update from CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3 Operations Section Chief Mark Brunton. Good evening. So we've had yet another uh, really good day of uh, suppression activities on this incident. Uh, predominantly in the northern uh, north zone near Botana Park uh, has been a, a majority of our work today. Uh, construction of line, uh, getting in there and, and really getting into the, the heart of the, the, the fire that exists there. Um, doing some burn operations to uh, straighten up the lines and, and to uh, make sure that the fire is fully out in, in certain portions. So. Uh, a lot of work today and a lot of continued work on the coming days. The coast is looking really good. Uh, a lot of mop up in those areas uh, to take care of those hot spots. Um, around Davenport, that's looking really good with the repopulated area there. The southern end of the fire is, is uh, doing rather well and we've, we've got a lot of mop up uh, in that area. Moving up the Highway 9 corridor uh, just outside of uh, Community of Felton, we're continuing to mop up along the lines all the way up uh, towards uh, Boulder Creek and beyond. Again, that uh, line uh, construction is uh, ongoing and, and being improved. Very steep uh, area and a lot of uh, heavy fuels, a lot of uh, burned out trees that are still falling. We have what's called rollout and, and uh, some of it crossing lines and we're just continuously monitoring that, picking that up as it occurs. And that's gonna be something we're gonna see for the days to come. Uh, with the repopulation, we are getting numerous calls for calls for service. People uh, detecting smoke, seeing smokes uh, outside uh, or near the line, but uh, outside of their, their property and that sort of thing. So we're responding to those, taking care of those, and it's something we will see in the coming days, especially as the weather gets hotter and drier, which will happen mid to late next week. Uh, the community of Bonnie Doom, a lot of really good work being completed within that uh, area, uh, getting lines around all the various fires and the spot fires that had occurred, the burned out areas. Um, and rendering that safe. Roadways being uh, kept open so the utility companies can get and do their work. A lot of work being done by the utility companies throughout the fire, so we're maintaining that. I uh, just got back from um, the uh, the state park, uh, Big Basin, and uh, uh, pretty devastating in there. Uh, significant devastation within that park, and uh, so there's a lot of uh, work to make that safe in there and to get the uh, utility companies so that they can start doing the repairs uh, through that area. Uh, for our air program, they've uh, done uh, quite a bit of flying this afternoon when the air cleared, uh, dropped to just under 100,000 gallons of water just today. And again, as the weather starts clearing and becomes uh, more conducive for our flying, um, they're continuing to do good work uh, in the coming days. And then today was the first day that we uh, started fire suppression repair. So those uh, teams are going in and, uh, and cleaning up our fire lines and, and making those uh, so that uh, they can uh, weather the coming weather of this winter and uh, not cause erosion or anything of that nature. And today was the first day that we uh, used our uh, National Guard crews to go in. And so we've worked them throughout the fire, whether it be in the North Zone, South Zone, and in Bonnie Dune area and in the suppression repair. So we've uh, divided those out among those different uh, suppression efforts and uh, utilizing uh, the, the staffing and mount priority they bring 
uh, to the incident to assist us, get us another day closer to uh, recovery and uh, completing this incident. Speaking next from the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office is Chief Deputy Chris Clark. Well, good evening. Uh, today was a busy day, really busy day. And so, and, and frustrating too, I can imagine for people that are, that are watching this, that are sitting someplace and really hoping to get home. And so what I wanted to do is, is really provide some perspective on what's going on because it's uh, myself, the sheriff, we drove around today. And I kind of want to just kind of give you a picture of what we saw today, but this is something we do and we've done uh, every day since this event started. You know, we, we're given information through CAL FIRE. CAL FIRE is doing a, an outstanding job in trying to put out this fire. And the utility companies are also working just as equally hard, even before the fire is completely contained and completely put out. So today, you know, we, we, we drove around, we drove throughout the county. And so, and really what we saw was that this area that's, that's this fire impacted area is still very, very dangerous. And, and there's a lot going on. You couldn't even go, uh, it, we drove Empire Grade, you couldn't go 50 yards without a number of uh, PG&E trucks. I mean, really, there's so many different PG&E resources here in the county trying to get those lines back up that it, it, I mean, it's just incredible to see the, that amount of people working and really trying to string lines and doing all that. I couldn't imagine them doing that work while people are trying to drive along Empire Grade. So that, uh, so them having the ability to work in that area is extremely important to get those utilities back and just makes that situation safer for them uh, and makes it safer for anybody else that's on the road. But we drove other areas like McGivern, uh, for example, off of Empire Grade. Uh, and so, and there's still fire crews in that area, uh, still working to make sure that the fire's completely contained and put out. Um, and then we drove Swanton and Last Chance, and then back around through through uh, through Jamison Creek and and and, uh, and Highway Nine back uh, towards Felton, and and really just the dangers that exist from falling trees. There, I mean, the county. I, I couldn't speak more highly of county roads and the timber companies working uh, literally nearly around the clock and trying to get those trees out of there to make those areas safe. I mean, just the thought of potentially a fire impacted tree dropping onto a car or dropping onto a road and you can't get out. Th those things are happening now and they'll continue to happen until those areas are safe uh, to get you back home. And that, and that absolutely is our goal, is to get you home as, as safely uh, and as efficiently as possible. And so, we're gonna, and as I mentioned before, it's, it's a day by day process. And while today necessarily we weren't able to get people home, and, and you know, and we've said this before, we want to get people home, as we wanna get you home as fast as we can. But these folks, they have to have room to work. And so really that, that was a, a huge priority today in terms of getting the, making that area safer. And so we're gonna take this day by day and there's gonna be areas that are gonna become more and more available as, as we go on. And so I just encourage you to, you know, to keep, uh, you know, keep, keep up to date on, on our social media and, and CAL FIRE's website as we start repopulating these areas. But you know, today's another, to, or sorry, tomorrow's another day. And so uh, there, uh, there'll be more areas opening as the days go on. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is water in the San Lorenzo Valley. So a, another issue, you know, in trying to get you back home, the water, if you've gone to the San Lorenzo Valley Water Board website, uh, the water is not drinkable north of Brookdale. And that's a huge, that's a huge problem. And so in trying to get that water back, uh, the SLV Water District is working extremely hard in getting those pipelines uh, uh, put back and making that water safe again. But definitely check uh, SLV Water District's website to make sure that you're up to date on, on that water situation, especially if you haven't evacuated in that area. Uh, so you definitely, if you live north of Brookdale, or in, the, in especially the fire impacted areas, uh, you know, the SLV Water District's advice, you just can't drink the water, you can't even brush your teeth with it, um, that it's just that unhe <coughs> unhealthy. In terms of our resources, uh, today we had 53 people, uh, officers and deputies that were driving around protecting uh, the evacuated areas tonight, we're going to have 46. And again, 24 from our agency, 12 from in county, and then uh, 10 mutual aid uh, officers from over the hill. Uh, in terms of calls for service, we responded to two suspicious people and one welfare check, and we made two arrests. And these were two people that uh, didn't belong in the area, that had no business being here, and our folks came across them, and, and uh, they ended up going to jail. 
Uh, there, we, we have just the two missing persons cases uh, total. We did develop one overnight, and so our detectives are working on that. Uh, and, and again, we will continue to work on that until we find where these, uh, where these folks are. Uh, the other piece I, I want to touch on briefly is escorts. So we have, uh, you know, if people absolutely need medication and, and things essential to life, uh, we've, been, we've been making that happen. And so um, we understand that sometimes, you know, in the rush to get out of your home, you couldn't get something that you absolutely had to have. And so we've been working uh, diligently th as these days have progressed in getting people back to, th uh, to, to their homes to potentially get things that they have to have. Um, and then what you'll hear uh, Chief Cox mention tonight uh, at, the, at the culmination of this press conference is that uh, we're going to go to more of a, um, as a, an as needed basis for these press conferences. But what I want to, what we want to assure people uh, is that our, we absolutely can empathize that you need updates. You want to know what's going on. And so we want to provide you with that information. And so just because these press conferences in this format may not uh, continue, at least not on a routine and regular basis, uh, that's not going to stop us uh, from providing you with information as we know it and things that, 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 you, that we feel you need to know or, or allowing you to be able to reach out to us to ask us questions. And so um, please you know, stay, stay tuned to our, our Facebook page. Uh, if you have questions, I fielded a number of emails. Um, you know, we want to know what you have to say, and so we've we, even our press information officer has reached out uh, to people as they posted comments about certain things. So we want to hear from you, and we want to provide you information. So that absolutely will not change until we're able to get everybody home. Thank you. Next, from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office, is Detective Blanksway. Thank you. Good evening. As you heard, these press conferences are uh, in the wrap-up phase, and we want to tell you how much we have learned, not only from communicating with our partners here, but also from communicating with the public and the manner in which we did that. So we've definitely gained a lot from this incident. The community um, and, the, and the neighbors that have been affected by this, we know that there has definitely been um, some hardships it's, it's hard, we know, to be patient when it feels like maybe you're not getting a lot of information, but we will continue to give you that information. You can find a lot of it on our social media pages, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also, uh, most importantly, on the Sheriff's app where you can get all of those platforms without needing to register or sign up for anything. We want to express our sincerest appreciation for everyone who has showed patience and cooperation and understanding there during this emergency response. We will continue to do the safety and security patrols throughout the evacuated areas and throughout San Mateo County as a whole as well. And a lot of work has been done, as you heard already from Chief Brunton and also from uh, Chief Clark as well. A lot of work is being done, even though you might not necessarily see it. We have been doing the best that we can to show that behind the scenes information on our social media platforms through the stories portion. So definitely stay up to date as best as you can with those and, and check out all the hard work that's really being done through all of our partners, Department of Public Works, PG&E, and a lot of the support staff as well that's going into making sure that this is truly a recovery phase. And all this, although this might be one of the last press conferences, we want to keep everyone informed, like I said, on social media. And we can only begin to tell you how grateful we are for everyone being so engaged with us on those different platforms. It's definitely been unprecedented times, as you've heard from all the fire personnel. But the engagement that we've seen from the community and our neighbors as a whole has been absolutely touching. So thank you again to all of our partners and to all of you. Next is uh, representing all of the Unified Incident Commanders on the incident is CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3, IC Billy C. Hey, good evening. Uh, obviously, uh, you're hearing a lot about this may be uh, one of the last uh, daily press conferences we do. Rest assured, uh, we're still going to have uh, quite a the uh, large contingent of firefighters out working on the ground each and every day. And with that said, there's going to be a lot of uh, fire engines and apparatus pickups coming through, and they're going to be challenged with the roadways, uh, with the population increase back in a lot of these areas. So just be cognizant of the uh, amount of fire traffic that's going to be moving up and down the roads over the next few days. 
firefighters are working diligently, gaining access or gaining ground each day, increasing the containment efforts. So we've got uh, warmer and drier conditions uh, coming in the next few days. We anticipate and predict that there's going to be increased smoke from time to time in different areas that heat up uh, when the moisture decreases and the temperature increases. So we'll have firefighters out on the line diligently monitoring those areas and uh, taking care of any hot spots that should arise. Thank you. And speaking next, representing the Cal Fire San Mateo Santa Cruz unit is UN Unit Chief Ian Larkin. So another good day. Uh, we continue to uh, see progress with our uh, containment numbers going up, and uh, that, that's always good. Um, so uh, as it's been stated, um, since we've uh, started to repopulate the areas of uh, Ben Loman and Felton, um, and uh, we just want to make sure everybody's vigilant out there watching the roadways um, and making sure you're, you're paying attention to those apparatus and those pickups that are coming through um, so that it won't have a, a, an incident where somebody may uh, have an accident. So uh, those firefighters are out there uh, to make sure that the line is contained. Uh, they're going to be patrolling that and uh, putting out uh, uh, hot spots uh, throughout the area uh, for, for many weeks to come. Um, this is a 86,000, uh, almost 86,000 acre fire. Uh, and we're going to be here probably until it rains uh, doing this, chasing smokes uh, throughout the interior as well as uh, a perimeter. So um, Chief C alluded to that we have some weather coming in. Uh, this will be a, a real test to our line um, as that weather comes in. And uh, we'll make sure that uh, we hold that line uh, so we don't get any uh, growth uh, of the fire. I just want to uh, reiterate to folks uh, that are entering back into their homes uh, to, to be vigilant uh, through this uh, remainder of the fire season. Um, you know, there is potential that uh, new fires can start uh, throughout the communities uh, and just be vigilant uh, and be ready uh, in that event. Um, really right now is the time for that recovery phase and you're going to hear some more about that just in a minute um, uh, to start that process. Uh, uh, Santa Cruz County uh, and San Mateo County both have their uh, damage uh, inspection websites up so that you can find out uh, whether your structure, um, if you're still evacuated, was damaged or destroyed. Um, and if it has been, um, now's the time to start that process and reach out to the uh, recovery centers or the local assistance centers uh, in the two counties um, to start that process. So um, uh, with that, um, you know, we, we appreciate your patience and uh, just bear with us a, a bit longer until we can get everybody back into their homes. Um, thank you. Uh, and our final speaker this evening from the Santa Cruz County Emergency Operations Center is the Emergency Operations Manager, uh, Rosemary Anderson. Good evening, everyone. So as you've heard the previous speakers speak, we are really heavy in the recovery phase right now. The County Emergency Operations Center really stands in support of all of the activities that are happening out in the field, which is, includes shelters. We are consolidating our shelters uh, this week and we'll have only five shelters remaining open and they will be at the fairgrounds, the Seventh-day Adventist camp, Harbor High School and Simpkins uh, Swim Center. We still have an, an active COVID incident as well, so we're, we're running all those shelters separate from the fire incident. We stood up our Recovery Resource Center on Saturday morning, and that is located at 114 Front Street at the Kaiser Permanente Stadium. It, we had about 350 people come through there on Saturday, about 266 yesterday, and the count today is about 225. We have federal FEMA trailers just adjacent to where the stadium is. We have state and other partners inside the resource center as well as nonprofit organizations and other resources for people that need information about how to rebuild. For everything from the DMV to the Franchise Task Board, et cetera. We're hoping to have the list of all those agencies. We've been improving the information about what those agencies do and how people can access them and why they would need to see them. A lot of times that's the overwhelming thing in recovery. Who do I need to see first? What do I need to do? We've been pushing things out also on our social media and Facebook pages, but understand that people who are displaced from their homes or living in areas that they don't have access to the internet, we're trying to bring that information to those areas to people directly in the way of flyers and phone numbers and things where they can get information without having to access the internet. 
but keeping in mind that our, our social media presence along with linking with all of our partners is really the best place to get the most comprehensive information, especially because it changes daily. We have two donation sites that are set up and there's updated information on our website for that about what specific needs they are. We're really channeling people through the community foundation specifically for cash donations and they can donate to different areas, but we also have a large amount of donated items that we're getting to evacuees. Those site hours change today from 10 to 4 daily and they're open from Monday through Saturday and they have been doing some amazing work. Our volunteers that are working out in the, re the Recovery Resource Center, our shelters, as well as these donation centers has just been astounding. I've lived in the county for 45 years, been through every disaster. I've never seen such an outpouring of support, community involvement, and just the collaboration between all, all of our agencies. It's, it's, it should make you feel really proud to live here. We also are uh, working to stand up a recovery branch in our emergency operations center that will really cover all things about what people need to understand or businesses and, and for public assistance of what FEMA will be able to offer, how that's going to work, how they're um, going to be able to file their claims and so forth. And again, we have some great partnerships sitting in our emergency operations helping us get that information, get it out to where it needs to go. And I'll be available for any questions after. Thank you. So as you probably heard, we will be going to an as-needed basis on the press conferences just to um, align to make sure everybody understands the information. Uh, fire information will still be coming out 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily as far as the latest number and containments uh, ongoing. Additionally, the operations briefings have been uh, broadcast on Twitter and Facebook for really specific information about the firefight. As we go forward, evacuation information will also be broadcast through each respective sheriff's agency's uh, information uh, portals and channels. And the recovery uh, aspect of this incident really goes to each individual county. So each website in the respective county and social media is the kind of go-to spot for that information. So as this kind of transitions to a recovery phase, we get that a uh, little bit of, um, of uh, separation of different responsibilities uh, and just making sure everybody knows where to go uh, to get the latest information. With that, we're happy to answer any questions. The car that went off the cliff um, on the Highway 1, Grave, Grave Hill, was that at all fire protected? Or that, so the question was related to the vehicle that went over the cliff, Graywell Cove and Highway 1 this morning. Uh, that was an unrelated traffic accident where a vehicle uh, left Highway 1 over the cliff and uh, firefighters uh, performed a cliff rescue. How much of the inspection process is done with? Yeah, the question is how much of the inspection process is complete, and I believe Chief C has that answer. The damage inspection process is about 95% complete. Right now we're doing cleanup work uh, using aerial imagery and comparing it to the uh, ground truthing uh, that, that has been done by the field personnel. So over the course of the next four or five days, we should be at 100% uh, and have everything ground truth. The question was related to how many shelters in Santa Cruz County. There's four shelters in Santa Cruz County. Uh, Randy Gordon, KBCZ, Boulder Creek Community Radio. Um, now that we are entering into a recovery phase and um, the CAL FIRE uh, press briefings are, are coming to a, a close, uh, in the future will, uh, will there be any other agencies represented in the press conferences that, we, that are held? Will we be able to hear from representatives from uh, PG&E, SLV Water District, Caltrans, um, some of those various agencies, uh, FEMA, uh, EOC, about, um, you know, with updates about the progress that they're making regarding repairs and um, what residents returning to their properties need to be aware of. Yes, the question is related to uh, individual representation from other agencies or cooperators as far as information flows are concerned. And, uh, you know, as this incident continues, as the firefighting still goes on, uh, the coordination with all of those individual agencies occurs internally as far as the repopulation process uh, is concerned. Uh, once that 
transition back to the repopulated areas that have been kind of uh, heavily impacted. That's when a more one-on-one -on -one between uh, communities and individual agencies would occur. Um, and that, well, that will really take place once those areas are repopulated and made safe. Uh, their focus right now obviously is to get the area safe to get people back. And I think if you have specific questions for them, uh, we can help you find the right contact. And I can just mention also that on our recovery website, we will have all of those agencies and pl places that people can get that information. So it's all linked from one place. Obviously, you can go to other agency websites and find that information. We're trying to pull all of that into that recovery page so that people can find it readily and easily. And really encourage you to go to the Recovery Resource Center, even as media, and see what's available there and what we are doing in terms of outreach for our partners. I did fail to mention that the Red Cross is taking over the operations for our remaining shelters and they're transitioning our county staff support out of those shelters and the Red Cross will be operating those shelters until we demobilize them and people are able to get back repopulated to their houses. Could you repeat that uh, website address one more time? It is the County of Santa Cruz website, and I'm sorry I don't know the actual URL, but if you just Google the County of Santa Cruz on the front page, it has all of our COVID-19 information that you can click on immediately, and then the CZU Lightning Fire tab is right available on the front page as well. Do we have a definitive um, answer about the safety of the water in the areas that aren't um, affected by the do not drink, do not boil notice? So the question is related to the status of the water outside of the do not drink, uh, boil notice. And Chief Clark will probably have more information on that. Sure, Randy, I would uh, pay special attention to the SLV Water District website. Um, what I was told today, I had a conversation with them, was that really uh, that, that do not drink and even boiling doesn't matter is just really affecting that Brookdale uh, area and then north and then obviously the Bonnie Dune area uh, that were impacted by fire. It, that's basically, it, it was the, the impact of the, of, and as, as I understand it, water was transmitted through like PVC type pipes and so uh, fire obviously got, uh, it damaged those pipes and so it, it allowed contaminants to get into that conduit and so they just don't feel comfortable with people con consuming the water until they've had a, a chance to test it, repair well, repair the lines, test it, and do all those things to make sure the water's safe to drink. So without being an authority on the water, I would definitely check the SLV Water District website to make sure that I have the best information. And I want to say that was updated at like 3 o'clock this afternoon with new information. All right. Well, uh, everyone up here is available for one-on-one -on -one questions, uh, should you have any. I just want to say thank you for joining us, and this concludes the 6 p.m. press conference.